Hi everybody, I'm Dave from the Polypad team and I am really excited to show you how to use the function machines on Polypad. So I'm going to close the geometry section by clicking on the word geometry, open the algebra section, click on function machines, and click and drag to add a function machine onto the canvas. I'll zoom in a bit so we can see it a little bit bigger here. First thing to note on this function machine, there is um, a black handle here where I can change the size of the function machine. And you can see that it starts as an x plus 1 function. And you can just draw things into the function. Before it becomes 5, 7, 8. Uh, and what I love is I can put in a variety of tile types into the machine. So I can put in one tile, and it comes out as a 2. I can put in a 10 and it comes out as an 11. We can put in number bars, so the three here is a four. So explore a variety of tile types that you can put into this machine. Here's six as a number frame, comes out as seven. We did the number cards. Let me just put in a, a prime factor circle. Three comes out as four. Really fun to go explore all the different tile types you can put into the function machine. Let me add a, uh, another one onto the canvas just to show you a few more features here. I'm going to change this function from x plus 1 to x over 3. So to do that, I'm going to double click on the function itself, use my keyboard to backspace, and then do x over 3. And I want to put in a fraction bar. So I'm going to go to the fraction bars, drag out the third fraction bar, use this handle to change it to one third, and then drop in one third. Out comes a ninth, it's so lovely, and put it in a ninth, and out comes a 27. We can zoom in here and see that's a 27. But what happens if I put in a number? I'll do these prime factor circles. First, let's just put in 12, something that is divisible by three. Nice, and we get four. But if I try something like seven, that's not divisible by three, it comes out as a number card because two and a third isn't something that you can represent in prime factor circles. I said two and a third, you can see it as 2.333 here. If I click on the number card and go to more tools, I can change this from a decimal to a fraction or to a mixed number. So lovely. So if I put in like 13, it still comes out at the decimal because I changed it on this number card. I didn't change it on the entire machine, but I can do that. I can go on the function machine and go to more tools and change the output type of the function machine. So if I want everything to come out as a mixed number, I can change it to mixed number. And then now they come out as mixed numbers. Unless, of course, it's, it's possible that the type of tile that I'm putting in can come out as that type of tile. So because I put in 21 as a prime factor circle, it'll come out as a prime factor circle. Uh, so that is really nice. The final thing that you can do as an input, I can use the equation tools. If I wanted to do like something like 3.27, and I don't want to build that as a, as a tile, I can just use the equation editor, and it'll come out as an equation, as 1 and 9 one hundredth. Of course, I could change this to decimal. What what was my 3.27 was it, I think? So I could drop that in and it comes out as a decimal. Wonderful. You might have noticed when I clicked on the more tools of the function machine, there's this toggle here where I can show the expression or not. And I love that toggle because I built some in advance and I want you to try to guess my rule. So all the times in math class when we do, can you guess my rule? Here's the one that I want us to start with. So let's go down here. Can you guess my rule? I pre-built this one so you wouldn't be able to see it the first time you're watching the video. Here's a function. Let's do it. Just put in a few inputs. Three becomes four. All right, not bad. Nine becomes 76. Whoa. One, negative four. Interesting. What about, let's do negative three. Negative 3 is 4 also, huh? What about, let's just do one more, negative 5. Nice. Now, I, 
I, I've lost track of all the inputs that I put into the machine, which is a good time to show our tabulate function. So I'll click tabulate and you can see that it, it, it creates a table of values of all the number, all the inputs and outputs of this function machine. So if I put in two, it'll add that to the table, or maybe I want to see what zero will be as an output. Students might say, can you show zero? Oh, absolutely. And now I, I can click on the table and I can click on scatter plot and I actually get a graph of all of those values. I will shrink this a little bit just to give myself a little bit more room. And now students could make a uh, make a prediction of the rule. So this, you know, I, I can imagine students saying, oh, it sort of looks like a parabola. So let's guess y equals x squared. I don't want to show the expression yet because y equals x squared might not be the correct expression. But I can go to the equation and I can type y equals x squared. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Right, and now I can attach this. This blue triangle is the starting of a connector wire on Polypad. And so if I attach that to the graph, oh, I can see y equals x squared is pretty close, but I kind of need to move it down a little bit. I'm going to change this color to purple. I clicked on the table to make those purple, and let's make the graph. Oh, oh, I made the axes red. That's fine. I meant to change the color of this, so let's make this blue. There we go. I need to shift this down a little bit. So let's do y equals x squared uh, minus 4, right? Oh, it's pretty close, right? But the, the 0 gave us negative 5. So it seems like it's shifted down 5. Lovely. And then I can go here and I can say show expression. Yes, x squared equals 5. Awesome. The other thing that you may have noticed was there on some of the functions, there is the ability to invert. So this one on x over 3, remember this was x over 3, there's an invert option. So I built another one on guess my rule where uh, I turned on the or I changed the toggle of the function machine into invert mode. So if I try to put in an input, it won't accept it. It will only accept it as an output. And so now 8 became 6. And well, no, sorry, six gave us eight, right? Because I'm going to, I'm putting in the outputs here. So I could tabulate this and I see that as inputs and outputs. So that's a nice feature as well. I could show the expression. I was doing a third x plus six. Obviously, there are some functions that will, will be invertible on the function machine, like one third x plus six and x plus one. But you'll notice when I had x squared minus five, the invert toggle is not there. So only a linear function will show an invert toggle. The final thing that I want to show in this video is the ability to connect multiple function machines together. Oh, it's so exciting. So I could just show you this first, that three is going in, and four automatically, because it was in the output zone of one function machine, automatically was the input of another function machine. I had my hands up to show you that I wasn't doing anything, right? This was just happening automatically here, right? So I can imagine a lot of questions where a teacher might set this to like, I don't know, 4x minus 3. And the question for students is to find the expression on this function machine. So when you put in 4, 4 is the output of this machine as well. So we can make some guesses of how to do that. Maybe it's, you know, 1 fourth x plus 3. I could, I could see students, like, making that as a guess here. So let's do 4 and, oh, 4 did not come out. It was 6.25, right? So maybe it's... Uh, we could change our guess. I think first we have to add 3, right? So let's do x plus 3, and then we have to divide by 4. Let's see if that works. There we go. We found that awesome. And like multiple, she multiple machines can be connected together. We don't have to stop at 2. I could put another machine here and then another machine upside down like this. And we could build all sorts of fun machines coming together. Let's see what happens when we put in three. Oh, look at that loveliness. Whoop. Ah, oh, so great. Oh, and it even shows it that five came out, right? Wonderful. 
So we are so excited about having these function machines on Polypad. We're excited to see what you create as teachers, whether it's a guess my rule situation, whether it's asking students to make inverses, just exploring with divisibility rules, what types of tiles can go in or out. Um, please share how you're using the function machines. And we're really looking forward to what you create in your classrooms. Thanks very much.